to 31 says, Be on your guard for yourself and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. I know that after many departures, savage wolves will come in among you, not spending the flock, and from among your own selves men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years I, would, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. It's happening, right? He says, be on your guard. Guard yourself because there will be a lot of people coming into your midst that will savage you. And you will not notice it. You will not notice it unless you are aware of it. Because they come in. The thing is this. When they come in our midst, they are not teaching heresy. That's the problem with these people. They were not, they are not negating the gospel. They are not living, they are not teaching wrong doctrines. You know why they are the enemy of the gospel? It's because of the way they behave. For many walk. It's the way they live. Their behavior testifies that they are the enemy of the cross. These are dangerous. These are not those that we can easily see Iglesia de Cristo. Right? Or, or uh, Jehovah's Witness or any other cause and we say, guys, stand away. Stay far. No. These are guys like you and me in the church. But their behavior testifies that they are the enemies of the cross. You know, we have to realize that our life speaks louder than our lips. A lie that does not validate one's lips is a poor testimony. You really cannot hide your true profession. It will reveal itself by the way you behave, the way, the way you act. No amount of um, profession can erase that. No amount of profession can erase that. That's why Paul says here, For many walk of whom I often told you, I warned of you, I warned you guys a lot of times in the past, and now tell you even weeping. Paul is weeping here not because they are pagan who are acting like pagans. Paul is weeping here and the word weeping here, the word weeping here is a loud expression of grief. Umiiyak talaga. Hindi yung I'm weeping, I'm crying in my heart. No, no, no. He is really crying. He cannot hold his emotions. And he cries. He cries out for them. Though they are the enemies of the cross, he cries out to them because why? Because these men are not men who are pagan and act like pagan. These men are men who claim that they are Christians, but in reality, they're not. They have that security of community. They have the security of their pastor saying, Son, you're blessed because you've been attending church. Despite 
despite the fact that their life is so opposite to the gospel, a lot of people find security in the security of man and not the word of God. And Paul knows definitely where this will end. That's why he was weeping because he knows they are deceived into thinking that they're safe, but in reality, they're not. You know, I'm, I'm amazed with Paul. I would feel mad. But he was weeping for them, for they are enemies of the cross. It is not those whose doctrines are wrong, but whose life is wrong. Their doctrine may be sound, right? But the life that they live testifies that they are an enemy. Go to Romans, please. Romans chapter. Romans chapter 2 verse 24. Romans chapter 2 verse 24 says, For the name of God is being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. These are the enemies of the cross. The name of God is being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Can you be accused of that this morning? Can people blaspheme the name of God because of the way you speak? Can people blaspheme the name of God because of the way you act? You're cold. You're harsh. Those people whose walk is contrary to the gospel are really enemies of the cross. You know, all of us, go, go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 22 to 24 says, I was still unknown by sight the church of Judea, which were in Christ. But only they kept hearing. He who once persecuted us is now <coughs> preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they were glorifying God because of it. What an excellent thing. They are glorifying God because of you. Right? Not that they are being blasphemed, but they were glorifying God. And Paul says, follow me. Follow my examples. Don't hang out with these people who claim to be Christians when in reality they are not. That's a big problem. You cannot claim to be a Christian and live contrary to it. You really cannot. I know nowadays churches has validated or embraced a lot of people claiming to be Christians but live opposite because they say, but we are to love really wrong doctrine go to Matthew chapter 7 and we know these verses but go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 27 it says 
Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. It's the way they walk. Not anybody who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the heavens. It's those who, do, who does the will. Di ba daming ganyan nowadays? Really? Verse 22, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy? Was I not a preacher in your name? In his name, ah, huh? It's the right name. And in your name, cast out demons. Still in his name. And in your name, perform many miracles. Surely, Surely this guy is a believer. How can he not? He preaches Christ. Right? He casts out demons for Christ. He performs miracles for Christ. 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What a hypocrite. And Paul says, there are many of those in our midst. Watch out for them. 24. Therefore, anyone who hears the word of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the flood came and the wind blew and slammed against the house. And yes, it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. 26. Everyone who hears this word of mine and does not act on them again the way they walk will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and slammed against the house and it fell and great was its fall. Go to Luke chapter 13 please. Luke 13, verse 25 says, Yes. Once the head of the house gets up and shuts the door, and he begins to stand outside and knocks at the door, saying, Lord, open up to us. Then he will answer and say to him, I do not know where you are from. Then he will begin to say, But Lord, we ate and drank in your presence. And, in, and you taught in our streets. <coughs> and he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God but yourself being thrown out. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, test yourself. Examine yourself if you are in the faith. It is not through a written exam that you will prove your faith. It's the way you walk. The way you act. I really don't care if you memorize the Bible. The devil memorizes the Bible. He was quoting the Bible when he was talking to Jesus. In fact, honestly, maybe the devil, if he was here here today, might be might know more than me. For sure he does. Right? Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. 